Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube with BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. I'm not gonna make a joke today. Just look at how stupid this hat is. It's amazing, I love it. It's just, that's that's what dads do. But anyway, appreciate all you guys watching my video on the Canic Rival S. It did way better than I would have thought. And you guys asked for way, way more guns to compare it against. Originally, I was just gonna do a P320 comparison video. But instead, what I did is I basically hollowed out the safe and I borrowed a Q5 from a buddy to basically get all of the top tier competition guns right now to see just how this little $950 Rival S or the Arch Rival, as we're now calling it, Arch Rival, see how it stacks up. So the Rival S is very impressive. Watch the review on this gun if you haven't already. But all of these guns, guys, I've got reviews on the channel accepting the Q5S. I got a Q4SF video, which is uh, pretty cool. But the very excellent Beretta 92X Performance Carry Optic I've got out here with me today. The Shadow 2, now guys, the Shadow 2 is gonna have a bit of a disadvantage. This Vortex Venom that I mounted on it is busted right out of the box, so I can't adjust the windage up. So this is basically just kind of as a consolation to see how it hits, how the ergos are going to be, all that kind of stuff. But the, the optic isn't good, so don't judge it for accuracy. The excellent Tanfolio Stock 2, which is basically what a CZ uh, kind of grew up to be. I won't say grew up to be, but it's, it's a different imagination of what a CZ double single gun could be with uh, slide and frame design. The OG inspiration for the Rival S, the Arch Rival, is the Q5 Match SF from Walter. Walter, whichever you care to call it, you guys can get angry in the comments on the pronunciation. The Walter is a really good pistol as well. It's probably the one that I would say if you've got smaller hands, this is probably the one that's gonna suit your hands the best. And finally, the current most popular carry optic gun right now is the Sig Sauer P320 Legion, Max, whatever you care to call it, but had to bring him out as well. It's the only polymer gun on the table today. So I was able to get the small bay at my gun club, and as a result, I could only test the accuracy out to 21 yards. So with accuracy testing, I validated the zeros on all of the guns and made sure that they, with the ammo that I'm shooting, that they were hitting well enough and zeroed the ones that needed help, excepting the Q5SF, because it's not my gun. Just so you know, guys, when I zero guns on the channel, I'm not like spending like 50 rounds and precisely getting the zero exactly right. Like I'm using a mag and getting close enough to where I can connect at 25 yards and calling it good. So don't expect breathtaking groups because that's just not me as a shooter. Canic Rivals first. All right, it's gonna be on the right target. Everything else is gonna be on the left target. That's five, right? I think that's five. We're gonna call that, we'll check, we'll call that five. Holy cow, that's pretty good. So one, two, three, four, five. Beretta 92X performance. Harder to grip the gun a little bit. Vertical stringing on the Beretta. Still a pretty small group, not a lot different from what we saw over there out of the rival but uh, the frame and trigger is easy to get a hold of, easy to control. I think my zero is probably a little bit low on the Beretta. All right, uh, the Vortex Venom that I just mounted on this Shadow doesn't adjust elevation. So do not judge based on how this is hitting because I'm having to use Kentucky windage to land it on target. At 21 yards that I'm at right now, I'm probably gonna hold four inches above the target to see if we can't get it in there. So. This isn't gonna be a great uh, comparison just because this Vortex Optic, unfortunately, is uh, not squared away. Let's see what we can do. Actually, I'll just hold it at the top of the target so I have something consistent to aim at and see how it lands. Hopefully I don't hit my GoPro. Good God, that'd be awful. It feels easy to shoot. Um, I'm really sad that this Vortex decided not to work because the Shadow 2 deserves better than that. Although it looks like the hits kind of came down exactly where I needed them to. Let's go look at them. So the group is honestly not a whole lot different from what I got out of the Rival. The Rival's a little bit tighter, but just for point of reference, that this was my point of aim for the Shadow 2. I was holding right here and it was dropping a solid 12 inches down. But that's, I mean, that's very good accuracy. If I was able to actually center the dot and have point of aim, point of impact, I'd probably be able to tighten that up, but you can see the central tendency of those three shots, very good. These are kind of all over the board. All right, the SIG P320 
P320 Max Legion. Frame is very good, a little broad at the back. I'd like the frame at the back to be thinner, that's why I like the AXGs a little bit better. Getting the grip to settle down is a little challenging, but I got it now. I don't quite have it how I like it. So a flyer high with the SIG, that's actually pretty good. If you disregard that, it's very good. Pretty much right, right in line with the rival with one flyer. Tan folio with this Tim and NMOA dot at 20 yards. There's no way any of this is gonna land on target. I just know it. It's very easy to get the grip to settle down on the tan folio. I feel really planted to the gun. Let's see if that is gonna manifest some good groups. That was not a good group, but it felt great. <laughs> tan folio puts out an even smaller group than the rival. That's the best group so far on the tan folio. All right, here we go with the Walter. There's not as much space for my support hand, so I'm having a hard time getting it settled. But I think I'm locked in at this point. All right, let's go take a look at that. That actually felt pretty easy. I think the group's gonna be pretty good too. That's four. Don't shoot four shots? Certainly didn't miss. I think I only shot four shots. That's a good. That's a great group. It's uh, <coughs> pretty much exactly the same as the rivals group, with better central tendency on the rival. Now, one thing you guys are naturally going to ask for is like, well, with trigger jobs, is that going to change everything and all this sort of stuff on the trigger? And to that, I say that people make a bigger deal about the triggers than what it is. All of these guns come with pretty good, if not great, triggers right out of the box. But what's really going to matter is the shape of the grips of all of the guns, because that's going to interface how the gun seats in your hand. And then the next piece is going to be your trigger reach based on your individual finger and how you can get on the trigger face. And beyond that, it's going to be basically just the action type. Obviously the striker fired guns are gonna behave more like long single action triggers, but the single action pulls on the double single guns are gonna be better than the striker trigger, so it's kind of not a big deal. Double action doesn't really matter, guys. I wouldn't really get in around the rim on that. So with that said, let's take a look at the frames of each one of these guns. We will start with the Rival S, because that's the bell of the ball right now. The frame on the Rival S, uh, there is a little bit of a buildup on the back left that because of how I like to grip guns, that affects my ability to really get the gun to seat deeply in my hand like I like. The Tang on the Tanfolio CZ and the Beretta is gonna generally play better with how I like my guns to feel. But even that said, I'm still able to seat this gun very, very well. Trigger reach is very good for this gun. And trigger throw is very good. The trigger out of the box quality is off the charts. It's as good as anything going, if not better than most. Coming back to the Walter Q4SF, the gun sits pretty deeply in my hand. It kind of feels a little bit weird how it interfaces with the grip. It's just sort of alien feeling. The relief under the trigger guard is very good. The grip is a little bit short and I would have pinching issues with no magazine well on this. The Walter grips and the Beretta grips really do benefit from having a mag well. I don't have as big a pocket to build my support hand grip as I do on the Canic or any of the other guns really sitting on the table. So for small handed shooters, this is probably a great one. The trigger reach is probably the shortest on this gun of all the guns that we come out here. So if you have smaller hands, this is probably the gun that's gonna fit you the best. Moving on to the Beretta 92X Performance. It also has a short grip. It's gonna pinch because it doesn't have like the, the mullet type grip that extends down the back. I'm gonna end up having to pinch myself on reloads a little bit. That's just kind of what it is with Berettas. Berettas with magwells are heavenly, but they're manageable even without. As far as how the grip is shaped, the relief under the trigger guard and the grip tang are very, very good. The grip is super, super ergonomic. Wish I had some palm swell grips on this because these grip panels aren't the finest. Trigger reach in single action is very, very manageable. In double action, it's a little bit long. Uh, smaller hander shooters may have an issue with this, but I know lots of guys with medium small hands who can shoot Berettas fluently and don't seem to have issues with it. Trigger pull is pretty exceptional out on the Beretta. Moving on to the Tanfolio. The Tanfolio is a large frame technically, but the recurve trigger makes trigger reach in single action very manageable. The way that the grip tang kind of seats the gun in the hand, it feels super secure in my grip. Uh, great pocket to build support hand grip on there. Feels really, really good. The trigger pull, as we mentioned, trigger reach in single action is quite good. And the double action trigger is kind of long, but still very, very manageable. Really, really good frame and the way the, the trigger is shaped is really strong. The Shadow 2 
is the probably most popular of this style of double single gun and the frame kind of comes to a narrower bit and brings my hand in around it. It does. It makes it very easy to seat deeply in the hand. It provides ample pocket to build a support hand grip. Trigger pull reach is probably the longest of all the guns that we have out here uh, with the shape of the way they've made these triggers. The quality of the double action pull is pretty good. Single action has a very short throw. It's quite nice in single action. Very muzzle heavy. This is the most muzzle heavy of all the guns that we're checking out today. And finishing up with the six hour P320 Max or it's basically a Legion, but this is the one that comes milled for the uh, Max Michelle site, which is a really, really good site. Seating the gun in the hand, you can seat it absolutely brilliantly. The problem is there's this like buildup on the back side of the frame, so it doesn't seat like I would like it to, but it's still not the worst. The slide is very, very easy to manipulate. That's one thing I will say about the P320 is it's got the easiest slide to mess around with, which is good for a practical type gun. The way the undercut works on the gun is nice, sinks it down in the hand real well. Trigger pull reach is very manageable. Uh, not quite as easy as the Walther, but very good. Now the trigger is easy to get trigger freeze on if you're shooting other guns, and I probably will run into some of that today. But that all said, when you're used to shooting a P320 trigger, you can run it without the trigger freeze. Those are the targets that I shot at from 21 yards. Now, shooting the guns at 21 yards i was basically just kind of locking in my grip on both of them so that i was not having to aim i was basically small small adjustments of moving around my arms and not kind of doing all this that's what i'd recommend if you're trying to shoot smaller groups i was able to put out what i would consider decent groups on all these it wasn't the most precise it didn't take all my time it was just very like practical accuracy type groups and all of the guns delivered the rival was no exception the ammo i was using was just supervel 124 certified bulk which is is decently accurate it's not like hollow point accurate but it, I would say that all of the guns performed at an acceptable level even the CZ which is surprising because the optic didn't all work and I was just kind of guessing then we moved on to build drills because that's going to showcase the stability at speed it's going to showcase how my grip interfaces with how the grips are designed how stable can I keep the guns got some slow-mo footage of that all that good stuff all right here we go got the Canik rival on the build drill. Canic will be on the right, everything else will be on the left. All right, get a good grip and just really let it go. Let's see. All right, those are all A's at seven yards, fair bit of jump. Uh, I don't really know how to control this thing. So the first shot was central, everything else came down and left. All right, here we go, 10 folio. Get a good grip. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, that one came back to zero a little bit better for me, just based on the shape of the back strap. I had a better time with that than I did on the rival, but I mean, the results were the same, basically. All right, here we go with the Q5 SF. It's a tough frame for me to grip, comparatively. That's very stable. I felt like the Tanfo. Let's go look at that. All right, Beretta, let's see how we do. That was very stable as well. I like how that dot tracks a lot. I like the Berettas. CZ <laughs> dot, let's see what happens. Very, very linear tracking due to the narrow beaver tail. Really good group out of the CZ. Let's go look at it. All right, let's try Mr. Sig Sauer. Get you going here. This trigger is a little tricky. I sometimes get trigger free, so we'll try and run it. Not getting trigger freeze. That was pretty good. Started coming back down and low toward the end of the string there, but it felt pretty good. Let's look at the hits. Give the rival one more go since it uh, got the benefit of going first. See if I can't lock in a little bit better on it and keep it together a little bit better. Yeah. 
I was warming up, so that's a much better group. Let's look at it. The build drill, I mean, I think I performed at the level of my capability on all of the guns. Uh, the Walter actually surprised me with how well that it did, but all the guns performed pretty well. Um, I was pretty pleased with all of them. Since I don't shoot any of these guns fluently, I'm not exactly used to the trigger throw length or the timing. Yes, everybody can do better if you're specialized on the gun, but because it's off season, I've been shooting a bunch of guns. Uh, I don't really have fluency with any of these guns, but they all performed quite, quite well. And then finally, we're finishing at just a 10 yard multi-target engagement going right to left, then left to right, just to see how the guns kind of perform at speed. Now on the two practical sides, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the rival first and I'm gonna shoot it last because when you're starting to get into the driving the gun at speed stuff, I am definitely gonna naturally get faster and tighten down my grip as I progress. So I let it go first and last. First is kind of a validation and last round to see like how much of it is me 10 yards multi-shot engagement let's see how it goes i'm gonna go right to left and then left to right on the shot timer just two on everybody 12 rounds total all right i was fishing for my dot but that's 270 it's pretty weak let's see if we can't do a little bit better i think it's all alpha though All right, I think I threw a Charlie on that last target, 241, let's go look at it. Walther multi-target with Mr. Big Window. I do not feel like there's enough to hold on to on this gun. We'll see how this goes. The trigger scared me, it's the dynamic performance trigger. Uh, even still, it's 238, that's not bad. Let's try again. That was pretty controllable, felt good. Let's take a look at it. All right, Shadow 2 again. This dot is not working, so I'm gonna be holding at the top of the targets. See how that goes. Basically, I'm gonna be point shooting this dang thing. All right, here we go. All right, 221, that felt nice. Go take a look at that and see if we could actually connect. I was just point shooting the whole damn thing. All right, Mr. Six Sour, see how we do, bud. All right. Ah, it's a freeze. That's the problem with these triggers is the SIG trigger is definitely longer and I uh, paid for it. That's a 285. I know I can do better than that. That's a 219. That's more standard par for the course. All right, Mr. Tanfo, let's see how we do. Uh, that tin MOA dot is way better. It's an unfair advantage for the Tanfo. Uh, but yeah, that felt great. That's a 216. Tanfo is pretty, pretty, pretty brilliant. brilliant. That was uh, good. Let's look at those hits. Here we go with Mr. Beretta Performance. Let's get a good grip on you. I wish I had better grips on this thing. Lock grips. Where are my grips at, bro? Here we go. That was really controllable. Like, that felt real good. Go again. Nah, I lost the time. And, uh, that's, that's pretty nice. It's pretty, pretty nice. Let's go take a look at the hits. All right, Rival Redemption Run. One thing I do notice is that the, this side of the gun, I wish was thinner. I could get my thumb kind of further in. It'd be nice, but still pretty good frame. There we go. That's 
All right, I'm pushing my first shot left, it looks like, but that's a 228. That was pretty good that time. That felt a heck of a lot better. It's 218, which is par for the course going left to right. Let's tape them up. On the practical accuracy bit, I really, I mean, not, nobody stood out, man. All the guns, so like, they're all about the same weight with the same quality of trigger. They've all got red dot sights. I mean, I was point shooting the CC, so you have to forgive it. The most points I ended up dropping was, I think, three Charlies out of 12 shots. So all alphas except for two to three Charlies, basically from everybody. Finishing up with the rival, uh, after I had clamped down my grip and gotten used to swinging the guns, it absolutely performed like you would want and expect it to do. So a lot of people are immediately like, well, which one are you gonna pick? Like, what? Like, guys, this is a preference game. All of this is preference at this level. I can say to you that I kind of favor the grips kind of like the Tanfo, kind of like the Beretta with how the undercut and the grip tang seat in my hands, even the CZ to a lesser extent because it just feels harsher with the narrower back strap. All the striker guns, because of how the actions work, have broader, they're just broader across the back. That all said, the rival absolutely, like, of the striker guns, I would say that I probably favor the 320 and the rival frames the most because they both, they all have the same quirk of they're too thick across the back where I just can't quite get my thumb how I want to get it on the frame to really anchor the gun in my hand. Now you can work around all that. It's not really going to affect how the, the guns are going to perform. If you get used to it, you can run anything. But real quickly, let's talk about the price points that you can find these guns at because that's really gonna be a consideration for a lot of the people who are watching this video. So starting with the Tanfolio, the Tanfolio is selling for about $1,600 at the beginning of 2023, which is kind of the going rate for all these heavy guns. Beretta 92X is an MSRP of 1,800 right at it, but you can find it if you shop around for a little bit less, really high 16s, low 1,700. The Walther is, it's jumped around in price. I should have looked and tell you, I'll put it on the screen, whatever it is. Is, but as I recall, it's about $2,000 for the Walther Q5 SF right now. The Shadow 2 Optic Ready, it kind of bounces around. There was some stuff around Black Friday where there was as cheap as like $1,300. I paid $1,549 for mine and you have to buy the optics plate, which isn't super awesome, but you know, some guns are that way. The Max is probably next to the Canic the best value pistol on the table because it actually comes with the optic already mounted on it for $1,600 and it comes with four magazines so it's already going to be the closest to being taking out of the box to the match kind of gun on the table at sixteen hundred dollars if you just buy a regular legion they sell for about a thousand bucks with three magazines i believe but the canic comes with two magazines for nine hundred and fifty dollars with a hard chrome finish i mean the the hard chrome finish on the tanfo the tanfo also has it and the canic has it as well the hard chrome finish is the best weapons finish on the table everybody else has the uh pvd type thing the nice stand finish on the beretta is also similarly awesome i would say i'd, I'd like it about as much as the hard chrome and it holds up about as well. The black finishes on the Walthers and the CZ and all that kind of stuff. Of all the guns on the table, the CZ probably has the worst finish. The frame is poly coat, which uh, is gonna rub down. It's a thick plasticky type of finish. The slide has the same finish of basically all the other black guns on the table. So the slides are gonna be just, just fine. So that's really gonna be kind of how you have to choose is like what's gonna fit your hand best? How much money do you have to spin? How's the trigger reach treat you? All these guns, like it's not even worth talking about the trigger because competitive shooters love monkeying with their triggers, but all the triggers out of the box on all these guns are great. So as far as value is concerned, like really if you were to get the P320 Legion, it's comparably priced to the Rival S, but everything else is about $500 more expensive for a similarly optioned pistol. When you're thinking seriously about competing, or importantly like I'm gonna spend the money on match fees and travel to actually go all over the country and compete, the actual cost of the gun really isn't something to consider, but for a lot of people who aren't gonna leave their local club matches, you know, the, the $900 ones are gonna be kind of more attractive to the competitor. So they're all really good guns, uh, but the rival absolutely can go toe to toe with all of them. It is set up really, really well out of the box, really well. But that's kind of all of the current offering of the competition guns going right now. I appreciate you guys. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one.